Good morning, channel friends. Hello there. This is one of the many pieces of furniture that is found in dumps, or rather one of the pieces of furniture that is most often found in dumps because it has no particularly valuable materials. For example, these beautiful, elegant, yet thin legs are often found cracked, and these beautiful pieces of glass are often broken. And I have to tell the truth. A piece of furniture like this is one of the most suitable for modern contemporary makeovers because with such furniture, you don't end up with a patina or something antique. You end up with a very colorful and very modern piece, and therefore they are perfect for any home. So, young people who are furnishing homes right now, stop wasting money on multinationals, selling off low-quality products, go to your grandmother's house, take properties like these that are from the 60s and 70s, and renovate them. It's not modernism. They are just old plastic-coated pieces that can be painted beautifully with magic paint. However, there is a treat today. It all goes around a stunning, beautiful wallpaper. And it's from the Jabula Collection, a collection from a company we recently acquired as wallpaper sales. It's called Cole & Son. It's a leading wallpaper company. They have some insane designs. And it's part of this collection. You'll see it's going to reproduce a pattern damask with the shape of animals. It's amazing. This one in particular is named Safari Totem. And I have to tell you the truth, it resembles a damask, a totem, joining all the animals and forming this kind of hymn to the forest. And I think it's beautiful. We will, however, make it very modern. This wallpaper will be inside and perhaps in other places as well. But it will be completely different. And the most beautiful thing will be the golden trim that will honor the wallpaper inside. So let's start and don't leave anything out today. <laughs> the showcase and put the upper part here to make it easier to work with. Those legs are very strong, but we do not stress them with repeated pulling. One of the most important things to do right now is to remove the glass. For a reason, they need cleaning and we must work on the structure without breaking them. So, working from inside, I'll remove delicately the string course that locks the glass. So Emma, you must help me. I proceed with a small spatula and a tiny hammer and you need to keep the glass very steady for me. I use two tools that are a bit old, a small spatula and a small hammer. You can also find these things at flea markets. So don't go and buy new things. Go to flea markets where they have lots of old tools, buy them there, and for a few euros, you'll have tools that work really well. I'm going to look for the nail in the string course here, for example, I have one. I will, at the same time, put my little spatula here and I'm going to beat until this happens, you see. Thank God they didn't put any glue because they knew that glue would make it impossible to work, even in the future. So, essentially, we work perfectly and efficiently by carefully removing the bead in this way. I still have a little nail here, you see. without breaking anything. The first string course has been removed. Now Emma has to mark them for me, so she will put the number of the window and write left. I say left because when I put it back, I see left. Be careful because if you reverse it, when you close it, it's right. So please, number them based on the direction in which you work. Now I do the same thing and carry on at the bottom. Actually, I am not afraid because the glass was also secured by two wooden blocks placed inside. So when I remove my string course, I will also have the nails to remove. And I have to take them out with small pliers. In a little while, I will show you how to do it. But mostly, there will be wooden blocks that hold the glass in place inside this small crack. I continue 
and then I'll show you how to remove nails without damaging the structure and how we remove the glass. We will use this small pair of pliers, which we find perfect for removing the nail from the inside and with two spatulas. Emma will place one here to protect the glass when I go to remove the nail and one here to avoid denting the wood when I use the pliers. Remember, if the nails are rusty, use some Svitol or at least an oily spray, which helps you remove the nail without ruining the wood because sometimes when the nails are rusty, they have a hard time coming off. See, it's slowly coming off. Slowly, very, very, very slowly. If you don't have anyone like Emma to hold the spatula, take it and place it here with two pieces of tape so it stays. One is removed. Once all the nails have been removed, now gently. Be careful not to press it, Emma. No, I'm holding it. I must remove the glass. I got it. All right, perfect. We put it away, however, writing down how it should be placed. So which is the inner side of this glass and the left and right side. So that we don't flip them, because these doors are very delicate and almost custom made. Emma is writing that this is the inside and she is writing bottom and top side. Let's set it aside, remove the other two glasses as well, and then proceed. Now that the glasses are removed and we are safe, we do two basic things. Let's drive some of these small nails back in. They might have come out slightly over the years. And then we'll polish this grate because it's so beautiful like this. Its value is precisely that it's vintage, but it's dulled and has some rust here and there. The trick is to use our jasmine oil with the smooth, thin, iron steel wool. Now, let's check the small nails. If they are inside and have never moved from their original spots, obviously, let's just forget about it. If, on the other hand, they have moved, we move them back to their places. I got the thin steel wool and I took a small piece of it. I also keep next to me a cotton cloth that I will use afterwards to polish. I put a bit of exceptional, fabulous jasmine oil. You should never be without it at home because it's useful for everything. I put a little drop on my wool steel and now I work to a spot where there is particular rust to show you. Look at this part here, for example. Look how dull it is. You should polish it very, very well. It makes no sense to paint this grid gold because it is already gilded and once it is polished, it will be beautiful. Moreover, if you look inside, it has this black threading, but it's very elegant. All the rust goes away, the dirt goes away, everything that's not right goes away. I assure you that it will be golden, very shiny, very beautiful, and it will stay so over the years because the jasmine oil has some silicone inside that helps to keep the surfaces shiny over the years because it protects them. Look at this, it has become beautiful, it is extra golden. I proceed by wiping this iron steel wool and oil over the entire surface that should be polished. I did it now and not later because in the end, when everything is fully painted, I might go and slightly ruin the paint with the oil and the steel wool, so it's better to do it right away. We start by painting the inside. 
Thus, I put the tape on the edge to be more precise with the color. We start with the first coat on the inside with Nuit Parisienne. We apply it pure because it is a very shiny surface. I carefully paint the sides but not the bottom because we will inevitably apply the wallpaper. After applying the first coat inside the cabinet, I also proceed to apply the first coat to the legs, which I have conveniently placed here on a perforated pallet to ensure more comfort. The first coat is dry, so I can start with the second one. First on the inside, so the side and the bottom, and then on the legs. I protect the inside of the cabinet before putting up the wallpaper so that any glue residues can be easily cleaned, and I do it with the satin protective paint. As long as the protective paint is wet, so it remoistened the tape for me, I'm going to remove it so I don't risk pulling off the paint. It's time to make the cabinet special because we rely on the wallpaper to do this makeover. And so until there is no paper, we can't really get it right. We must always remember to also adjust the shades we use, the papers, with the environment around us, because if we really like some paper, but it doesn't fit in our environment, it's not worth it. So we decided to start by applying the wallpaper directly on the background. As you can see, Emma has already painted and applied the protective paint so that it can be touched up without further staining the color. And we'll start, okay? Have you already taken the measurements? No, I'll take them now. Go. 100. One meter. Exactly a meter. Let's see if the height's the same here, too. Yes, old furniture pieces might be uneven. Here is the same. That's perfect. Is it 133? And four millimeter, 133 and a half. Anyway, the paper is 53 centimeter wide, so we have to cut three stripes and trim the last one. Perfect. Three stripes, trim the last. But did we consider the waist? We need to calculate this at opening. Where can I see the waist? On the paper's instructions, I'll take it. 
We will calculate it later, once it has been applied, because we have one meter height background. But the waist is always listed here. You see, it states 64 centimeters, with this specific wording, which would indeed be the repositioning. Don't ever throw this waist away. Remember, these 60 centimeters, if any, depending on the size of the wall, it is not always 64 centimeters before it is repeated, because it says 64 centimeters. But you have to understand how wide our wall is. Basically, the 64 centimeters represent the repetition of each design. So obviously, if a wall is taller or shorter, it will be more or less. Exactly. And we don't necessarily have waste. We don't necessarily waste it. But if we do, we keep it to make a draw or something we will do later. Exactly. So let's start and cut. We got this very precise centimeter ruler so we don't waste anything. I cut it in the back so I can make marks with the pencil without ruining it. Okay, always remember this is important. Don't cut the front design, but from the back. This is 70 centimeters. Can you put it straight? I'll line it up for you here. Thank you very much. I'll mark 70. So that we can add 30. Let's take another measurement, then we will draw the line. Now let's proceed and draw a very nice line. Perfect, shall I go now? We placed it on a surface that we absolutely do not care to ruin, so on cardboard. And there you have it, very precise. This. So which way? This way, right? Yes, that way. Because it has a direction, giraffes have to be right. It will be the first piece that we are going to place on that part. Let's cut them bit by bit as we move forward, okay? Not all at once. Let's start preparing the glue. To glue paper to large surfaces, it's better to use special glue, the one for wallpaper. So we're not talking about drawers or small objects on which there is little paper. You must always also consider the weight of the paper on the surface. So we use a special glue. This one is very good. It is a powdered glue that is used for all types of wallpaper. Therefore, wallpapers that are also made of vinyl paper and thus washable, all of them, from the lightest to the heaviest. Remember that on the back, if you have to put it on the wall, there is the weight. So this small package has to be diluted in eight liters of water. So you will make an entire room. If you prepare all the glue to make a room, it is always best to keep it closed no air must go into it, otherwise it will dry out, of course. We use a method that Emma has already consolidated over the years. So, despite all predictions, we always put the glue directly on the surface because we work with small surfaces and it's convenient for us that way. So, we prepare the glue and in our case, there is no need to dilute the whole package. We barely put a drop of powder in this percentage of water. We really only need a very small amount, half a teaspoon. Can you hand me a brush in order to stir? Remember, it is a glue that quickly becomes thick. So we will go pretty much by eye in this case. The important thing is not to make lumps. And if you put too much glue in the water, you'll definitely have lumps. You can easily do the maths, but let's say that for 25 grams of water, we will need around a teaspoon. Now I'm going to wait a little while for the glue to thicken and see if the gelling is right for us. The thickness. As you can see, we've put about a teaspoon in the cup. There are two fingers of water in the cup and it's fine. Do you see it's almost turning into jelly? Perfect. Now Emma will use the spalter brush. Are you comfortable? Yes, because I can grip it well and go nicely into corners. It's the same brush we use for our decoupage and many other things. So it is a product that I think you have to keep in the house. I'm handing you the glue and letting you work. I'll get the spatulas for you. Okay, thank you. I start by putting glue all over the surface. Anyway, it doesn't dry very quickly, so I have plenty of time to work with it. And if by chance a bit of glue gets on the black, I don't worry because it becomes sticky after quite a while and I have applied the protective layer anyway. 
I don't spread it out too much. I leave it a bit thick. Make sure to apply it well in the corners because they are the ones that tend to come off more quickly. Go, Emma. I'll hold the bottom. I have to be careful here not to scratch it because there are hooks. You should go a little bit higher. It's easy to glue it. They define this material as a non-woven fabric and it is quite durable. I take all the air bubbles out starting from the center. I'm missing a bit of glue here, but I can always add some more. I let it out a little. Rather, we'll trim it later. We will remove those two millimeters with the cutter. Exactly. Go. Perfect. Go ahead and press. Beautiful. Let's go touch it up back there. I'll get you a small brush. Thank you. You see, this is the glue's thickness after a few moments. If you take a bit to reposition the paper pieces, be sure to put a film piece on top to avoid air exposure. So, I'll go directly with the spalter brush and gently put some glue on the widest part. I go out a bit, nothing happens anyway. Besides, if I'm going to get close to the paper, I'd rather go with a brush though. We manage. Yes, indeed. We were a bit stingy on this part. Anyway, it gives us the chance to work on it and raise it. Wait, I'll put some more on because I smoothed too much. I'll get a wet cloth to wipe the excess. Oh, I can finally see the essence of this makeover. You know that before this paper was on, I still didn't quite understand what color to make the furniture. Let's remove the excess glue that can create some thickness, like this, by wiping it that way. And now, you see, we are working on repositioning. Therefore, the waist of this roll is 64 centimeters. Honestly, I really am not good at math, but if this is a meter, what does 64 plus 64 make? It's 128. So one meter minus 28 means we have a waist of 28 centimeters. We hope to find a use for these 28 centimeters to avoid waste. Jokes aside, now how much do you cut? 128 centimeters. Go ahead, let's flip it again. Yes. I have one meter. Okay, I'm marking 70 centimeters again. 58, right? I'm currently marking at 58. Okay, the same thing over there. We know there are these 28 centimeters of waste likely on top, right? So we try to start from the bottom. I'll add the glue, do you trust me? Yes. If by chance you also go on paper, nothing happens. Because by taking quite a while to pull, we have time to wash it off. So, I look at the bottom. Yes, well done. Try to be very precise as much as possible. Nice, it's very easy to place indeed. How well it works. It is not a simple wallpaper. 
It is not what one might imagine, a simple wallpaper made of paper. It has great texture. Very well done. Now, as soon as we're done, I'll show you the junction. I'll show you how precise we were. I'm here with the cutter if you want. So if you press well, I will cut it. Look how precise the joining line is. You can't see the separation between one piece and another of the wallpaper. Beautiful. Now we cut the third piece and put it on which will be a bit more difficult because we have to cut and then trim it. But we will do this. See you in a bit. In this small piece, the molding has come off. Fortunately, I found this piece on the floor so I can put it back on. We have two options. Either put nails, but be aware that nails with a wide head and hammer are not good on this piece of furniture because it is plastic coated anyway, for many reasons. And you would see the head. So, if you want to put the nail in, make sure you have a tool that will get you into the surface of the nails directly and delicately, and they must not be visible. I will use my nail gun afterwards to protect the rest of the moldings. Otherwise, you can also secure them with glue. I always use this one. I think it's very good. I use it both for applying moldings and for filling and gluing. And it's a vinyl glue specifically designed for wood. So, I carefully put some glue on, ensure it sticks well, I gently remove any excess to prevent it from overflowing. I'll put it here. And then, anyway, I'm going to put some nails with the nail guna because I want it to be just perfect. I also do the part underneath. I'm going to carefully place on the inside a low tack tape, so with low adhesion, to avoid damaging the paint and to ensure a perfectly defined edge when we proceed to apply the second exterior color. I save a millimeter of black border and then put the paper tape on. I'm glad to have placed the wallpaper first since it's vital to clearly see the internal color with this light to know which color to use on the body. So I decided to use Madame, which is a very nice and elegant Marsala and goes very well with the background shades, but it has to be desaturated a bit because it is a soft shade, a bit bright. So I will use my Nuit Parisienne, which is a vintage black. So we'll mix them and see what comes out. Let's start by putting some Madame in this bowl. I pour 250-300 grams approximately. Now let's also take the Nuit Parisienne and put a drop of it. Let's pour a bit. Here. A drop, about three tablespoons of Nuit Parisienne. Now let's stir it and try to understand if there's enough. Emma. Could you kindly also get me just a little bit of torta di zucca, please? Actually, I would really like to warm it up slightly, so I will add just a bit of torta di zucca that will add a slightly burnt flavor, which I think is needed. Let's stir very, very well and see if this beautiful, warm, yet slightly burnt shade has produced the desired effect. Now, Emma, listen, let's take a piece of cardboard so we lay it out on the cardboard and see if it's okay. Let's spread it out. Perfect. You know, I think it's the right one. I like it very much. In fact, it echoes both the part of the palm flower and the beautiful elephant's ears. Beautiful. But 
not all of it because I want this black border, this little piece here also see, we'll make it all black. So even the top and the bottom, look how much it clings even on such a shiny surface, insane, just insane. I use the Elizabeth brush, which is perfect for these very shiny surfaces. The coverage is exceptional, really great, and I am very happy. It grips very well. Look, Emma, look at this. Look how well it covers. Beautiful. The second coat is definitely the final one, and it will be a really nice piece. Beautiful. So let's carry on with the whole cabinet and help me as there's also the outside part to do. One thing you should always pay attention to is the width at which you place the paper tape. Emma is good, she knows it by now, and she has placed the paper tape two millimeters further inside the edge. Be careful because some pieces of furniture that are a little crooked when closing the door could show a glimpse of the edging. And you end up with it in a different color to the inside, so be careful. Now we have already put on the paper tape and with the brush immediately, as soon as the paint has been spread on the outside, you already go to the edge. Why? Because if not, it dries and you have to scratch. So do it immediately. Outside you have done this piece, inside you do this. We are at the last strokes on the furniture. And they are the most delicate because if you make a mistake now, you put the paper tape on wrongly smudge. It takes longer, doesn't it? Small brushes. I have the pointed one and Emma the 30 brush. And with Nuit Parisienne, our black, we will paint the divisions. The legs are already black. We're going to do all the borders we listed earlier. So this little border here, which is attached to the legs. Then we're going to leave this gap with our Marsala. Here all black. So black here, black here and black here. To do the inside, we wait. We will do it later. In fact, as you can see, we put this low tack tape on the pink parts to protect them from the black paint. Emma starts from the top and begins to paint the upper part with Nuit Parisienne. So Emma, no dripping or leaking. Everything must be done precisely. definitely need a second coat, but the first one already provided a lot of neatness and precision. It looks very good. There you go. Now we dry with the hairdryer and then apply the second coat. We are almost finished. I must point out one thing. 
We have already applied the protective coat here. We took the showcase case, finished it inside, removed the paper tape, and everything is perfect. We took the top, laid it on the bench, applied two coats of protective paint, and put the top showcase back on. So indeed, look at the difference of the Nuit Parisienne with protection and without protection. Stop saying that this beautiful black is not black, because it makes no sense. It is a vintage black. It is true. It is a warm black, but it is black. In fact, once protected, it changes completely. Okay? So don't be afraid if when it is still damp, or in any case unprotected, it is a little browner. It is not like that in the end. Now I use the Architetto brush because it works well in the corners. The satin protective paint diluted a bit more. I diluted it about 30% because I really want the brush to slide over the surface, and I don't want to have any flaws. I protect everything with this perfect satin protective coat that makes the furniture modern. It's already spectacular. Once protected, it will shine in its own light. Emma, will you help me? Yes, I'm coming. Well done. A piece of advice. If you have flaws when you're applying the protective paint or you are struggling, dilute it a bit more so you'll see it glides better. You'll struggle much less and won't have marks. Always remember that dilutions are a suggestion, but then they must be adapted based on the surface, the temperature, and the month you are in. They are always made based on the temperature of the month you are in. They are unique, okay? So, if you notice that you have some small flaws when applying the protective coat or you struggle, dilute it a little more, you will see how it glides and how it will be almost impossible to have any flaws. I now, as before, lay it down. With the doors closed, then I will open them and check for any flaws. Remember also that it is always pleasant when there is a nice, smooth, velvety brush stroke, meaning that if it is applied with a brush, you will see the brush stroke, of course, but a nice, neat one. Nice. This makeover is finished. I don't want to sugarcoat it for you. To make a piece of furniture like this is not easy. It's much more difficult than doing on any piece of furniture some color washes, patterners, dry brush, aging, or texture. There's no comparison. Doing a piece of furniture like this, smooth but precise, without smudging, and above all with dark colors, with black as we did today, is much more difficult. So I suggest that if you want to achieve modern results, but are a beginner and want to repaint, be careful. Don't take these tutorials lightly. Watch them well. Don't skip and learn from them, because it's not easy to paint well in a modern and precise way. I warned you. I don't want to scare them off, but we are used to doing patina and antiquing. They are easier than making furniture like this. So the challenge here is not the paper. The challenge here is not choosing or creating the color. These are the most fun, most playful things. The challenge here is to be precise and smooth while achieving a perfect makeover. When you really want to accomplish something modern, smooth, and perfect, you have to practice, okay? So, if you are a beginner, I suggest you don't start with a showcase like that. Start with something precise, but small. For me, the ideal setting is seeing it in front of a wall with matching wallpaper. Love at first sight. Remember the name, it's called Jabila, from the Cole & Son collection, which is called Safari Totem. Truly wonderful indeed. See you very soon. This makeover is also finished. We put this piece of furniture on Alessandra's wall. If you want to see this tutorial, it was published last week, and it doesn't cover the wall because it enhances its beauty. The color of the wall matches the color of the furniture, and you can see all the paint touches on the sides as well. We like this piece of furniture very much. It's beautiful. Once you open it and look at the inside and see its perfection, it's insane. The wallpaper is a gem, so if you want, you can enjoy using it in other colors too. This wallpaper, it's truly spectacular. The colors were really spot on, even though they were not quite like that. We changed them in the process. They perfectly match the wallpaper and have made this piece of furniture, which is quite old, really beautiful, modern, and... 
They've really freshened up our office because now it's in our office. We needed a piece of furniture where we could put all the files and office stuff anyway. But they've managed to connect all the colors in this room, from the lucky forest walls to the pipe, everything, even the bricks. So leave me a comment telling me if you liked it. And remember, Grandma's Furniture, 60s, 70s, 80s furniture. If it's not strictly modern, if it's not valuable, if it needs to be saved completely, don't throw it away. Don't take it to the dump because it's a shame. See you at the next makeover. Goodbye. Goodbye.